Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this whole video we are... Hmm... Well, we are going to a lake, we're going to Idaho, and we're talking Eisenberg. Good name, it makes me think of, uh... Well, you know. And in this story we are floating on Coeur d'Alene, which means heart of an all. That's like a trading days lingo. But the heart part, that can stay. Because there's a lot of heart in this one, though, as usual, maybe not, you know, in the way you'd want it to be. We got cons, you know, we got on the run, and we got just a whole, a whole big old thing here to, um, well, have a goo at. So, let's do that. It's always good, you know, to give a bit of a background about a place so you can get a better feel for it and its people. And in this one, hey, you know, I know you've been asking for it, you um, non-existent people. But this one takes us to Northwest Idaho, the city of Coeur d'Alene. If you're into the outdoors, as the people in our story are, there's a metric, there's a metric button of shit to do. Um, so, you know, look forward to that. If, I'm not sure if this story will make you want it. Go. I think so. It looks good. I'm having trouble shit talking this place. It's on Lake Coeur d'Alene. What are the odds they name the city Coeur d'Alene? And there's a lake. So there's a lot of uh, squirt squirt water sports. And there's also mountains right beside. So, uh, rock sports too, I guess. Tourism and recreational activities are the main beep beep drivers of the city. A city which roughly 50,000 people call home, swelling up in the summer. Most people who live there say it's it's very pleasant, it's not too big, nor too small. Tourists are generally annoying, but tourists are always annoying. Even when I'm a tourist, I'm annoyed at myself. Salaries are generally low, but it's compensated by the quality of life. Especially the the lake. Everybody, everybody talks about the lake. Shut up about the lake already. Accidents don't seem to be too, too fairly common. The most notable one recently though, was when two planes collided above the lake on the 4th of July weekend, 2020. Eight people died. But there was an accident two years prior in February 2018 that we're gonna be talking about. My friends, that's where our story begins. In winter, the lake, it's pretty cold, as you can imagine. On average, February is when the lake is at its coldest, 0 0.1 degrees Celsius, so literally freezing, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Back in the day, people used to drive across it in February in Model T Fords, to the point that under the lake, there's quite a few of them when they fell through the ice. But it was on the 13th of February, at roughly half 10 in the AM, that the Kootenai Sheriff's Office, that's, you know, the county, they got a 911 call. The caller was one lore seen, Lori, Eisenberg, you're goddamn right. She had been on the lake with her husband, Larry Eisenberg, in their boat. They wanted to watch that sunrise. But a romantic breakfast on the boat, you know, hmm, seasickness. In a place called Suns Bay would turn, well, it would go uh, horribly wrong. While they're out on the lake, Larry was having a goo at a broken motor. It was sounding like it was banjaxed. And so while he was over the edge of the boat, just looking at the motor, he simply fell into the icy, icy depths. Uh, Laurie said that he looked around once at her and he looked like he had seen a ghost. He was pale as hell. And he simply went in. Lori was on the other end of the boat. She ran over to where he had gone in. She tripped over a space heater, banged her noodle. And above the water, all was quiet. Lori drove the boat searching for any sign of her husband of 14 years, but nothing. Then she found his phone on the boat and called. I want the <laughs> Is it in the water? Why? Hang on one second. Let me get this. 
The police raced onto the lake and quickly found the Eisenberg boat. She was there with a bloody nose, and they got the lowdown of what happened. He said he didn't feel good, and he was doing things weird, and then he went up to the motor, and the motor was broke, and it was the other motor. Okay. And then I said, why are you doing that? And he mm-hmm. turned to look at me, and his face just looked... Okay. It looked awful, and then it just started to fall, and I, I tried to get the door open and get to him, and mm-hmm. I couldn't grab him, and I... I'm just going to try to ask you some questions so we can kind of figure out where to go from here. Okay. Uh, can you tell me, uh, how did you get the bloody nose? I fell down. You fell down. So okay. she fell against the I was door. Trying to she was trying him. To... Okay. All right. Well, we're going we to, we got the best people out there looking for him right now. Okay. So we're going to do what we can. Rescue boats found out. But I mean, the water it was. It was absolutely Baltic. The chances of any kind of rescue were already gone. Larry would only have had a couple of minutes, no matter how strong a swimmer he was in that frosty water. Larry wasn't found that day. Lori's husband of over a decade and a half was gone beneath the water of Lake Coeur d'Alene. Lori and Larry had what others would say was a model relationship, living in Coeur d'Alene and both having kids from previous marriages. Lori was born in 1953 and she grew up very, very poor, poor as punch. Her family would squat in empty farmhouses for a time. Things were tough as nails. When she was 19, she married her high school boyfriend and would have six daughters with her first husband. They would divorce after 23 years in the late 90s she moved to Coeur d'Alene with her daughters. It was there that she began a relationship with Larry Eisenberg. Well, a public one. Larry was a forester and fisherman, two kids of his own, outdoorsy, so no better place to be. And he had met Lori while she was still married. She was his secretary for a time and, uh, well, you know, over time, he became a little more than his secretary. They would marry in 2004. This being, uh, this being the wedding picture, which is like, all right, calm down a bit, come on. They would live in a place called Cougar Gulch. It was like 20 minutes outside of the city, and it, it, was, it was like a cabin, but then it became a compound. They would just keep adding to it and adding to it, and it was like this little paradise in the woods. It was pretty sweet. They would go hunting, they would go up in the mountains, they would go on the lake. Lori would go on and work for a housing coalition, specifically the North Idaho Housing Coalition, where she was executive director helping provide housing for those in need. Are you tired of renting? Want to buy a home? Well, you're not alone. Almost everyone starts out renting with that dream that someday they can own their own home. Hi, I'm Lori Eisenberg, Executive Director of the North Idaho Housing Coalition, and I'm very pleased to be able to take a few minutes and talk to you about two programs we have that may be able to help you or someone you know purchase a home. Larry, by this time, he was retired. They were active, you know, in their community. They helped out with different groups, charities. They helped raise their grandchildren in the outdoors. They knew their stuff when it came to uh, rocks. Well, Larry did. Got a lot of neat geology behind it. Later, we'll find one about monkey balls. And they had a big growing tribe of people surrounding them as they got into their golden years. And they were very much still mad about each other. And then this happened. Lori, she was devastated. These searches would continue fr- fruitlessly uh, for days. You know, Lori, a couple of days after, she would be re-interviewed to, re- to, get, to try and get a sense of exactly, you know, exactly what happened that day. But she would say what I just said. They got up really early that morning to go out and spend, you know, the morning, the, have their breakfast, watch the sunrise on the lake. Lori would say he was acting a little bit off that morning, but nothing too weird. What she saw, what she said she thought happened was that it looked like he had a stroke, heart attack, that kind of thing. They were driving, then the ignition tripped, so he went to have a look at the motor. While he was looking in there, he looked back at her, and then he simply just rolled in. The water in the lake would be so cold, it would sink like a stone. 
when she saw it, she she freaked out. She 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 didn't have her phone on her. She left it back in the truck, back on dry land. She assumed his phone was in his pocket when he went overboard. So she she was searching around. She was driving the boat to see if she could see anything. She couldn't. She eventually did find Larry's uh, phone in the boat, but by that stage, two hours had passed. One thing was that a few days before uh, the accident, he had been he'd been sick with the flu. They had just been to Florida, been and went to Florida. But um, other than that, like the day before, he was fine. Nine one one. What is the address of the emergency? Port Lay. Okay, and tell me exactly what happened. Well, nothing's happened, but I believe that there's a dead body on our shoreline, right outside of our house. Larry's body would eventually be found, washing up on the 1st of March. It was spotted not far from where he had gone overboard. An autopsy was done rather quick, and no water was found in his lungs, so likely likely the stroke or heart attack Laurie had described. More tests were done, though. And then this information, you know, it was it was relayed to a bereaved, a bereaved, as you can imagine, Laurie. But by this stage, Laurie herself, you know, she, she had a, uh, bigger problems, bigger fish to fry, if you will. And they couldn't find her. Laurie was gone. Please, search warrant. In the front door, empty handed, hands up. See, about two weeks after the accident, Laurie was arrested. Not for murder, though. This was actually completely separate to what happened to her husband. I'm just really drained right now. Are you arresting me? I think I'm going to put you under arrest. These guys are going to take you into custody right now. Grand theft and forgery. It was a rather funny, not necessarily ha-ha funny, but it was a little quinky dink right? That the day Larry went overboard from the boat, Lori was fired from her job at the Housing Coalition. It was actually printed in the Coeur d'Alene Press that very morning, but Larry didn't live to see it. She was fired, reason being, there was some accounting irregularities in the books. The board of the Coalition discovered she had been signing checks without any approval, and the checks were made out to non-existent companies. They realized the numbers were not adding up at all, and uh, well, this was not looking good. Long story short, she'd been stealing from the coalition, which is pretty, uh, I don't know, shitty, I guess is the word, I don't know, can't really think of a better one. I mean, coalition was there to help, you know, low-income young couples and families and all that kind of stuff. It's got like a charity, right? Helps them get their, their first house, just get affordable housing. So she was like, well, ah, she, you know what? Don't mind if I... He's a bit da She had stolen about a million books. The FBI would later say, though, it was about half a million. Starting in 2015, when she would pocket about $16,000 a month. Her daughters, the reporting says, were in it. It appeared that her daughters were broke, needed some financial help. And that's why she was doing the stealing. Now, Larry, it seems he was completely unaware of the con but people did say the money she kept giving her daughters caused strife in the marriage. But then when the FBI traced, uh, you know, the money and bank accounts and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, they were only able to track down 50 grand, as in it had gone from Lori to her daughters. Where the rest of the money went was, uh, it, it went into the ether probably of somebody's Swiss bank account. And then, just a few weeks before Larry died, uh, Laurie changed up his will so that 80% of his assets, which were a good couple of million, would go to her children, and only 20% to his own children. And so, in late February, she was arrested and charged with 40 counts of forgery and one count of grand theft. I'm being told to write your booking sheet out for one count of grand theft and 40 counts of forgery. Her bail was posted by one of her daughters the very next day. 
From our North Idaho newsroom, her husband disappeared into Lake Coeur d'Alene earlier this month, and tonight she's behind bars. Lori Eisenberg was quiet at her first court appearance Tuesday. She's facing 40 counts of forgery and one count of grand theft. You're charged by felony complaint with uh, a number of charges. In fact, when word about this began to spread around town, you know, about the con, about Lori had been fired, and then her husband disappeared on the lake, people began to, the rumor was that Larry had actually done a legger, he'd faked his own death, and was now in like, Belize or something, waiting, you know, for Laurie to join him there, and then they would... Laurie had two court dates related to that case, which she just didn't attend, you know, eh, couldn't be arsed. Once again, a no-show in court today. Now a bench warrant has been issued for her arrest. In fact, she could not be found at all. Half a million dollars was the warrant for her arrest. And it was during this time that the Kootenai County Coroner's Office released the results of Larry's toxicology tests. He had been poisoned with Benadryl. The chase was on. They got tips in Seattle, in Southern California. Dog the Bounty Hunter, he was in it. So shit just got, doesn't get any realer than that. This went on for months. Lori had even mentioned to one of her daughters that she was gonna fake her own death. They would never find her body. And then she would just, um, I don't know, what you gonna do after that? Then. Lori Eisenberg turned herself into the Kootenai County Jail last night. Just hours ago, she faced a judge after months on the run. She's accused of stealing half a million dollars from the North Idaho Housing Coalition. When she skipped her court date, a judge ordered a $500,000 arrest warrant. She was on the run ever since running from court and possibly from an investigation into her husband Larry's death. Lori reported him missing in February. He was found dead in Lake Coeur d'Alene in March. She told police Larry drowned while they were out on their boat, that a medical episode may have led to his drowning, but an autopsy by the Spokane County Medical Examiner showed no visible signs of stroke, no evidence of drowning, and lethal levels of diphenhydramine, known as Benadryl, in his system. On Lori's computer, they found searches about drowning, about water, you know, depths. They began to think, the police began to think that the flu Larry had a couple of days before uh, he died may not have been the flu. What happened started to become pretty clear, but not why. Can't be a coincidence, though, that she killed him the same day she was going to be exposed. If he found out about this, uh, his kids would say she would have been turfed out on her hull, you know, kicked out on her arse. In fact, a couple of weeks before it all came out in the newspaper, the Coeur d'Alene Press, she cancelled their subscription to it just in case rumours were abounding. And so what the police think could have happened is that she put the drug in her smoothie and gave it to him. And then she pushed him over. But he must have been dead uh, when he went in, right? Because there was no water in his lungs. Well, there was blood on the boat when she said she hit her head. Maybe something else happened. It could have been diphenhydramine toxicity, which is Benadryl just killed him. Or he could have gone in alive and it was dry drowning when your throat just closes up. We've seen that in cases before. She then... Rum. State housing officials estimated that Eisenberg's theft impacted 20 low-income families and left them cheated. Those people really were worried about what's going to happen to us. Eisenberg was placed on leave from the nonprofit last year after she forged checks, overcharged renters, and laundered money. Prosecutors said that she brought her daughters in on the crimes, giving them some of the money. In January 2019, she pleaded guilty to three counts of wire fraud and one count of theft. She was sentenced to five years in prison for that. Two years ago, police believe she killed her husband on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Now, we started covering Eisenberg back in February of 2018. At that time, she was accused of embezzling money from a nonprofit that helped low-income families with housing. But a month after she was caught, the body of her husband, Larry Eisenberg, was found in Lake Coeur d'Alene. Larry's autopsy showed that he had a lethal amount of Benadryl in his system. Now, authorities didn't initially name Laurie as a suspect in his death, but today, well, that's much different. The sheriff's office continued to investigate Larry's death. Last month, a grand jury convened here in Kootenai County and eventually charged Laurie with first-degree murder. 
She was already in federal prison serving time on embezzlement charges, but today she appeared before a county judge to face the murder charge. Lori was charged with first degree murder in February 2020 for the death of her husband, Larry. Rather than go to trial, she took an Alford plea and pleaded guilty to second degree murder. In May 2021, she was sentenced to life in prison, with no parole for at least 30 years, by which time she will be 97 years old. So, good luck! During the sentencing, uh, Lori, she took the time to, to explain what happened in her own words. First off, I'm very happy to finally be able to tell the families what happened. It's not easy, but I want you to see the good, the bad, and the ugly is that I emphatically know that I am responsible for Larry's death. And I have known that from the very first day. I wish now, I wish so badly that I could go back and tell my family what had happened right then. It would have saved so much pain for them. Mainly that Larry's death was an accident. She had prepared the Benadryl lace drink for herself to kill herself, she said. But Larry, he said that looks tasty and had a few glug glugs before she could stop him. So her plan was to kill herself out on the boat with her husband right there. Right, okay. I'd say maybe a week or two after the embezzlement was discovered. I knew that I owned, my life was over and I had two options, death or life in prison. I know that Larry would still be alive if it was not for me fixing a drink with Benadryl in it so that I would be able to selfishly and cowardly take my life. If I wouldn't have had that bottle in there, he would not have accidentally drunk it. She went on for like 50 minutes. I am not I'm sorry. Please shut up. Please. Please shut up. And remember the money she stole, it went to four of her daughters, four of the six. Uh, they would all plead guilty and get four years uh, probation. And so ends the story of uh, Eisenberg. I feel like I've covered a, a couple of cases that are kind of similar to this recently, con artists, but usually when I uh, discover one, it leads me to the next one, leads me to the next one. This one is super interesting though, in that the murder didn't actually have anything to do with the con. It was the fallout of the con, the con because she knew she was just gonna get kicked out by her husband. She really must have been at the end of her rope to do that to uh, her husband. Well, you know, everyone said she loved dearly. Well, that's obviously not true. She killed him so she wouldn't be out in her ass. So at the end of the day, the only person she co she cared about was herself. But she went on the run and everything because she wanted to avoid the consequences of everything she had done. Anyway. All right, that about wraps up uh, this soul, that chapter, this chapter. Uh, you know, I got a feeling though, as soon as I post this, I'm gonna be like, man, I missed out on so many good Breaking Bad references. It's gonna annoy me. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here at the end of the video. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, here, go on. I'll see you as always real soon in the next little video if you're still listening. But till then, take care of yourselves. Love you. Bye, Kev.